National Junior College men's basketball returns to MCTV Sports in the Bears Den on the campus of Phoenix College, where tonight the Bears, the eighth ranked team in the country, playing host to the 11 and 12 Eastern Arizona Gila Monsters. Along with Will Warasilla, I'm Jeff Lowry. Welcome to MCTV Sports. Phoenix College, uh, arguably uh, the most successful Division II team in this Arizona Community College Athletic Conference. Matt Gordon, the head coach in his 13th season. They were national champions a couple of seasons ago. They come in riding a 19-4 record, and they have been in the Region 1 Finals in each of his 12 seasons. Yeah, he's the reason I'm standing over here with you. I, I got real clear on that years ago that he is the best coach in this conference, in my opinion. And you look at the total number of conference wins in the last three years, some people would think it's a Division I program like Coach East or Mesa. It is actually Phoenix College. He has the most wins during that time frame. If you like three-point basketball, you like up and down play, stay tuned for this one because this is going to be a fun game to watch. Well, they're number one in three-point shooting in the conference, but nationally they've made more threes than any other junior college team in the country. And they're coming off a very impressive win last week, winning by, they were up by 43 at one point, eventually winning 106 to 67. So they can put up the numbers. Levette Parker had 24 in that game. Eastern, they're coming in here. They're pretty much out of the playoff picture, but they're playing for some pride. And I think they'd like to see a competitive game here. I think they'd like to come in here and sneak one. And they feature three of the top scorers, and they'd love to come in here and steal one from Phoenix. Absolutely. Number 22, DeAndre Love. That's who you've got to keep your eye on tonight. But talking with Coach Litzky before the game, I went through this my second year at Scottsdale, where you have unexpected injuries at the beginning of your season that are just so hard to overcome. But give him a lot of credit. He does have the three guys out on the wing spots that really can score it with Bolton and Bradford or the other two you got to keep your eye on. This is going to be an up and down game. The key to this, in my opinion, because Phoenix leads the nation in three-point field goal percentage. Not only the conference, they lead the nation. And so Eastern's guards, even though they want to get out and run and score, they have to chase the Phoenix shooters off the line. The problem is you have seven of them that shoot over 35% from beyond the arc. So it's pick your poison. Yep, absolutely. And they're coming off a 111-100 loss at the hands of Pima. So tonight, the eighth ranked Phoenix College Bears, they're going for their 10th 20 win season under Matt Gordon. They've won seven regional titles in 12 seasons. And I think this is a team that might be primed and ready to make a run for another national title. Will and I will be back with all the exciting play-by-play -play action on MCTV Sports when we return in just a moment. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. All right, welcome back to the Bears Den, Phoenix College. We're getting set for National Junior College men's basketball. Eastern Arizona coming out of Thatcher, Arizona, down in the southeastern part of the Grand Canyon State. Phoenix College wins the opening tip-off, and this game is underway, and they're under the guidance of the forward Nelms. Up top, the Goolsby, and they'll swing it over to the corner, and the shot no good on the angle. The rebound belongs to Jordan Tyson. This is gonna be a track meet up and down all night. Just watch the pace of play right here. In earlier action tonight here at the Bears Den, 85-80, Eastern Arizona's women's team came up with the win. Keeping that ball alive was LeVette Parker, who was the leading scorer in their victory over Central a couple of days ago in the last game for Matt Gordon and his Phoenix College Bears. Matt Gordon in his 13th season Maurice Leitsky, the head coach for the Gila Monsters. Down to seven on the shot clock. Goulet loses it. And to the hands of Davon Bolton, one of the top three scorers on this team. 
and they pull the trigger and find a super trio, and Davon Bolton has given his team a 3-0 lead. Yeah, the one thing about Bolton that PC is going to be aware, he shoots 41% from that three-point line. So not only is he athletic and can put it on the deck, but he really can stretch the defense with that ability to knock down the three. Goulet comes right back. Check that. Devontae Nelms. Goolsby, excuse me. Jumper from the left side is good by Tyson. Five to two in favor of the visiting Gila Monsters out of Eastern Arizona. Five to the score. We play two 20 minute halves here. The ladies are playing four, four quarters now. That was a rule change a couple of years ago. Jumper no good from way out by Nelms. So far Eastern's done a really good job of chasing the Phoenix shooters off of that line. Here's the dribble drive, the penetration underneath. Loose ball corralled by DeAndre Love, the leading scorer for the Gila Monsters. Here's the pull-up jumper, no good. The sky rebound belongs to Plummer. Plummer coming into this game averaging five rebounds a game. He's their top field goal percentage shooter, nearly 70% from the field. Jumper, good. Three-pointer, and we're tied at five. 17-23 left to go. That's where Eastern's going to get into trouble. If they try to go underneath that screen at the line, Phoenix has all the shooters out on the floor. They're going to make them pay every time for going underneath that. Riley Goulet ties the game up with a three. Now a set shot from the corner is no good. Here's Parker on the rebound. And here comes Phoenix College forcing the issue, but the numbers weren't there. Jumper, Parker, in and out no good. Heartbreak Hotel. The rebound, DeAndre Love. 5-5 five, five tie. Jumper good, and that is Davon Bolton. And he's got five points to lead all scorers. That's a three-pointer. Make it six, his second three-point shot of the day, and it's 8-8. Eight, eight. Well, we said in the pregame, if you like the three-point shot, you're going to love watching this basketball game. Eight to five is the score. Phoenix trying to get back to one possession, and they got it. Reese Plummer with a big rebound. And the putback in Plummer. One of the more physical players on Matt Gordon's roster. Phoenix coming in 19 and four, but in conference they are 12 and three and they trail eight to seven here in the fourth minute of play. Well, in talking with Coach Gordon throughout the week, he feels this is the best team that he's had here. And looking at how they're put together, hard to disagree with them. They're long, they're athletic, and every single one of them can shoot the basketball. Well, Tyson, who's six foot nine, gave up his body and forced the turnover as Eastern will take over. Jonathan Matthews checking into the lineup, the leading score. But you know, we talked at the top of the broadcast, Will, this is a very balanced scoring team. There's really no, I don't want to say there's no superstars on this team, but there's just not really one great scorer out there because of the team concept. Right, and that's one thing that coach always preaches is the more balance you have, the better off in the success category you're going to be. And these guys have bought into it from day one. DeAndre Love, he had to climb the ladder and a nice putback. They had a couple of offensive rebounds on that last time down. 15.30 on the clock. Phoenix College trailing it 10 to 7 here from the Bears Den in downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Work it over to Goulet, and it's off the back iron, and Love has another rebound. Here comes Eastern with a three-point lead, their largest lead of the contest. Jumper Love averaging over 18 points a game, and a three-point goal has extended the lead to six. Well, good possession there by Eastern, just rotating the ball side to side, creating space that they can go and attack. Matthews in. Worked it over. They worked a good shot there. It, they're not falling right now for Phoenix College. And that's one of the downsides of having an offensive system where you rely on that three is that if you get chased off of that line, sometimes they're going to come in bunches, but sometimes they can dig you a hole as well. And Bolton has his third three-point goal, and we are five and a half minutes into this contest. 16-7, Eastern on top. We'll be back on MCTV Sports in just a moment. 
This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. All right, we're back here at the Bears Den. Along with Will Warasilla, I'm Jeff Lowry, our entire MCTV crew here tonight. And Eastern Arizona has come right out and smacked Phoenix right in the face. Yeah, great start to the Gila Monsters game. But look for Phoenix right here to get on track off that timeout. Looking for the open man. Kavion Moore is now in number 20 for Phoenix College. And so is Pupillo out of Chicago. And they find the open man, and that's a three for Reese Plummer. He's got five to lead all Phoenix College Bears back to a six-point lead. Bolton, number one, a big game so far. Sesma goes up strong. Phoenix, good job by Plummer keeping that one alive. Look it over to Moore. Pillow, top of the key. Plummer, who's had five points. Goolsby, shaking and baking in the low post. Now work it around. Good patience here on the offense. A strong move by Plummer, and it was well defended. Yeah, not a bad post entry there. Just a shot that I think they've got to make sure that that goes down because that's going to open up everything else on the perimeter if they can get that shot to go. Landon Schwartz, two missed shots since coming off the bench. And the drive on the other end and the foul, and that will put Phoenix College at the charity stripe. Now that's one of the things when you play Phoenix College that I'm sure Coach Litsky has talked to his team about is that you guard the line. And that was a prime example right there where rules of transition basketball normally are stop the basketball, then protect the basket, and then guard the line. Right there, all of the EAC defenders stayed out at the line, clear path to the basket right there by Wade, and ends up drawing the foul. Quinn Johnson is back into the lineup, the 6'6 sophomore center out of Valley Vista High School in surprise. Avante Nelms, who started the game, Attended his high school, just down Indian School here, a few miles at Arcadia, and he is back in the lineup, 6'5", 200 pounds. And that's a good thing for Coach Gordon, too, because he can continually roll guys in and out of this game, keep those legs fresh for all those shooters. And Davis Wade gets one of the two free throws. 16-11 is the score. Here's a turnover. And apparently Phoenix... Well, they dribble, not sure what happened there. I thought maybe he dribbled out of bounds. 13 minutes on the clock here in the first half. We play two 20-minute halves. Junior college men's basketball and MCTV Sports. Five-point lead. Phoenix trying to cut it to a one-possession game. Papillo out to Nelms. Got a short breather back in there, finds an open. Davis Wade for three. Super trio time for Wade. Four points off the bench, and it's a two-point two point game. Yeah, he's another one of those Phoenix shooters that shoots over 35% from beyond the arc. Now Eastern. This could be the fourth. It is. Boy, I am telling you, this Davon Bolton has been impressive. 12 points. He leads all scores. And it's a 19-14 lead for Eastern Arizona. Yeah, he's definitely a guy at 41% from beyond that arc. Every time he catches there, you've got to run him off that line. Even if it means he gets by you, let your secondary defenders come in to play there and help because you cannot give him an open look at that line. Plus, he has not missed. He's four for four from three-point range as Moore lost control of the ball. Last touch by Eastern. Phoenix College will inbound, get it to Davis Wade. Nice move, may have double dribbled. Up to Nelms, Nelms with a nice soft touch with the running left hand and it's 19-16, back to a one possession game with Phoenix College trailing, visiting Eastern by three. Loose ball picked up on the baseline, it was blocked from behind, the putback is good. Heads up play by Jerron Richardson. One of the short guys on the field, and timeout Phoenix College. Yeah, just looking over at Coach Gordon, he is not happy 
about the lack of security on the loose balls right here. They've got to get to those to get out and fuel their transition break. Well, what a run it's been for this gentleman and his tremendous coaching staff. Came into this program back in 2004. Has, I mean, his team has been in the Region 1 finals each and every year. Uh, probably will be there again this year. Yeah. When you think about that, that run of success, that every year that he's been here, he has played for a championship. Uh, just absolutely unbelievable, the program that he has built here. So when play resumes, it will be Phoenix College basketball inbounding right in front of us in our scorer's table. James Papillo out of Addison Trail, Illinois, in the Chicago area. Bounce feed down low and a tough shot there as it comes out for Quentin Johnson, the 6'6 competitor. Played on this team last year. Of course, we mentioned as this is a loose ball, it's going to be picked up by Eastern. Work it over to the corner, and the three ball is up and no good as the shot was taken that time by Darren Clark. One thing to watch here is how number five, Davis Wade for Phoenix, is now shadowing Bolton everywhere he goes on that line, that he is pure face guard on him right now. Keep your eye on that. Yeah, number five for Phoenix College, very physical, only 6-1. Good put back on the miss, and that's Tyson who scores. He's got four. It's 23-16, Gila Monsters. Great pass going up for the slam and drawing the foul is Quentin Johnson on an assist by Popillo. Fantastic pick and roll play right there. Both players have to have an awareness and an understanding for that to work. Great execution by PC, very slow rotation by Eastern on that, and they give up the dunk in the N1. The free throw is no good, but keeping it alive is Phoenix College, but now they battle, and they're gonna give it back to the, they're gonna give it back to the Bears, and a reach-in foul here on DeAndre Love, or is it 32? It's 32. It's 32, Jaron Richardson. Yeah, this is a great officiating crew that we have here tonight, led by Mark Beasley right now, the uh, lead of the officiating crew that's here at the scorer's table. Sometime during the game, I'll give you a funny Mark Beasley story that I had when I coached, but you could not ask for a better crew with him and Corbett Hess, who's out at the hash mark on the far side, and then Mike Lojeda, who's on the baseline right now. Great crew officiating this game tonight. That's a push off on the drive. It's going to go against Avante Nelms. That's his first team's second. And great defensive position there. That's a tough play for the defender because you have to stay vertical while moving your feet. And the instinct always is to reach as a defender. But right there, great job of just staying vertical and forcing Nelms to push off. Good trapping defense by Phoenix. And it almost the end result was a turnover. Running shot in the lane, and he got the roll. That's Bradford. Bradford averaging nearly 16 points a game. Eastern with three players averaging over 15 points a game in conference. And a wild shot that time by Moore hit the back iron. And here comes Bradford and the Gila Monsters. He'll go all the way, pull up for the jumper, no good. Nice rebound there by Nelms. Yeah, that's one area where this Eastern team is lacking. And a lot of it is due to the injuries early in the year have been hard to overcome, but they need an inside presence to go with those three outstanding wings that they have. Another missed shot, 25-18 is our score. And Phoenix with a turnover. See if they can turn it into something. Nope, they turn it back over, and this is Darren Clark. He finds Bradford, and he missed the shot. He's gonna get his own rebound. He's got three rebounds already mm. at the 9-12 mark, and then he throws it away. Here comes Nelms all the way down. He will give it up. A couple of passes and the score by Wade, Davis Wade. And they'll cut it to a 25 to 20 score. Very sloppy transition defense there by Eastern. It started back in their offensive end with the turnover. We had one guy that decided not to run back, another one to reach, and all of a sudden it became an easy four on three transition and almost one too many passes by the Bears there. 
Unfortunately for them, Davis Wade was able to convert. He's got six points coming off the bench. And, and he's been that quiet player for Coach Gordon. He's just a solid guy that plays both ends of the floor. Really valuable player for the Bears. Three ball, good. 28-20, the lead is up to eight. Their largest lead for Eastern so far has been nine. 8.40 on the clock here in the first half. This is Jonathan Matthews, their leading scorer, who did not start the game. And now we're going to get a push off the second foul against Avante Nelms. And I would imagine he's going to be coming out of the game, and he is. Yeah, that's a tough call to make on that screen, but it sure looked like he did move and force that defender to try to go around. It's a moving screen, and unfortunately for him, he's got to sit now with that second one. Rashad Goolsby will check in for him. So Nelms is out of the game with two fouls. Pull-up jumper right at the free throw line, and that's DeAndre Love. And he's got three field goals, seven points, largest lead of 30, 20, 30 to 20. Phoenix counters, and the shot off the rim. And there's Bolton bringing it up out of backcourt. This guy's just looking for that separation to pull the trigger on that three-pointer. He's hit four of four here. Good pass and another three. And Phoenix may need a timeout here with 7.51 left to go. Well, but they've already used, yeah, he's going to take a full right here. You know, right now, when you have a situation like this where Eastern really their season for all intents and purposes is just play out right now to come into the number eight ranked team in the country, they have really risen to the challenge so far and have played well. Well, and we mentioned it uh, in our pregame. I mean, you know, obviously you, you want to win every game that you go into, but I mean, Eastern, I think uh, this is one of those games where you can kind of sneak up on a great team like Phoenix. Absolutely, and because they have the three wing players that really are explosive and can score. They match up really well with Phoenix from that regard, just in style of play. They like to get down the floor. They like to stretch it. They have guys that can knock down the three-pointers. You know, when you look at a guy like Bolton that's shooting 41%, you know, you've got to respect that. And by crowding him on the line, that creates a lot of space for guys like DeAndre Love that really so far in this game has impressed me with his ability to score in a lot of different ways. And what's so amazing is the fact that Phoenix beat Eastern back on the 10th of December, 106 to 67, but right now they trail by 33, 33 to 20. Yeah, and that's one of those things where uh, not the start that Coach Gordon obviously is looking for, but the thing about this Bears team is that in two and a half minutes, we may be talking about a tie game because of their ability to explode and score a lot of points and bunches. And just being around that timeout, not very far from Coach Gordon, uh, he kind of let his team have it. <laughs> and Johnson with a nice pull up jumper at the 735 mark here in period number one. First half action, 33 22. This is Fowles, give it up to Clark, and then he gives it up, and that's DeAndre Love who has scored again. He's in double figures. Yeah, he's going to be a tough cover for PC all night. He is long, athletic, and really just moves very easy. Another player control foul, and Eastern will get it right back. That's a costly play there for the Phoenix College uh, Bears. You look at those three players, those top three scores, and it, it really does spread a defense out. Oh. And you wonder why this team hasn't played better this year. That was a good piece of officiating by crew chief Mark Beasley down there, too, to explain there was a lot of confusion about whether it was a foul or just an out-of-bounds violation, so that clarification was made. Under seven minutes left to go here in the first half, 35-22. This 13-point lead is the largest lead, and now another three ball. And what about DeAndre Love? He's taken over. He reminds me of a player that I used to coach uh, my first year at Scottsdale was an All-American named Jermaine Crockrell. 
just a guy that is an explosive scorer, can beat you a number of different ways and just glides when he moves. It, it, the game looks very easy to him. So we got a non-shooting foul against Eastern going against Jordan Tyson, his second, team's fourth. Eastern Arizona in the purple and gray, they lead it by a score of 38 to 22 with 6.36 left to go here in the first half. Three ball, Phoenix needs it, couldn't get it. The battle out of bounds and a great play. And Eastern will have possession. That was a tremendous, well, you saw the athleticism of Deshaun Flanagan fouls. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's always been the case with Eastern. They always have a lot of athleticism out on their wings. 16 point lead, the largest. And now it's 19 and a three ball by Darren Clark. That's his first field goal of the contest. We're down to the six minute mark. And another Phoenix turnover. Yep. Right now the athleticism defensively of Eastern is bothering PC. Whenever you see moving screens like that, and that's the second one we've seen, usually that's an indication that the defenders are being very active mm. with cutters coming around those screens. And so far, Phoenix has got caught twice on those. Well, they trail by 19, largest lead of the contest. Goolsby was called for a push off. That's where the turnover came about. Matthews taking a shot. And Phoenix just can't buy a three, and they're the top three-point shooting team in the nation. And that's also what we said in uh, the entry to the game too is that that's also the downside risk of being a team that lives out there is sometimes you can die out there. And Nate Bradford goes all the way to extend it to a 21 point lead. Down to 525. First half action. Davis Wade is in there. We're going to get a push off and I think Phoenix College might have gotten a benefit of the doubt there. No, uh, I think that was a great call by yeah. Ojeda on that baseline. Yeah, the offensive player had a great seal there, and the only way that defender was going to get around him was to try to hook and throw him out of the way. Easy call for him to make. Litsky didn't like the call. Well, right now his team's on the roll. He just wants the ball as many times as he can get it. So they may need these 21 points yeah. when it's all said and done. Here's the drive. Baseline, the block shot, but not before the foul. Yep. It's going against Jonathan Matthews. So Phoenix College will call a timeout with 5.05 left to go here in the first, trailing 43-22. Pretty much good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against the wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. It's been a tough start for Matt Gordon and his eighth ranked Phoenix College Bears. They trail 43-22 to Eastern Arizona. Eastern is at the line. Both teams, five team fouls. And this is Deshaun Flanagan fouls. And his first free throw is good and everything working. All eight cylinders here for the Gila Monsters out of Thatcher, Arizona, southeast corner of the state of Arizona, Thatcher. Beautiful little farming town. Beautiful Ooh. job and the slam dunk. DeAndre Love, the leading scorer in the game, off the assist by Fowles. Good Lord. This kid is fun to watch. My goodness. And an offense, a defensive foul. That was a foul on or Wade. Foul, for offensive a push foul, off. excuse me, Wade. Yeah. That was an easy call to make. Right now, you know. When you have a team like Eastern that unquestionably has a lot of talent but hasn't had a very good year for a lot of different reasons, when the pressure is off and they can just play basketball, this is the result you're going to get. And, boy, you're seeing it right now. 
Boy, a great crossover move, top of the key. What a rebound on the missed shot, and it was fouls again. 48 to 22. This one's just come unraveled. Do you want to? You want to take back that prediction you made it? No, the break? I'm, I'm going to stick with it because the one thing that I know about a Coach Gordon coach team, th this game will tighten up before the end of it. Boy, that broke a long, long stretch there. That was a 15-0 run. Yep. And the one thing about it with Eastern is they're not going to continue to shoot it this well, and Phoenix is not going to continue to shoot it this poorly. So this game will balance itself out in the second half, I'm sure of it. Matthews, who just hit a three, finds an open man, and another one. That's six unanswered. Yep. Basket made by Davis Wade, and what? Where would they be? They'd be down 30 if it wasn't for him. Probably. He's been a very, very good player so far in this game. A little pressure defense. But right now, if you're Coach Gordon and the Bears, you're telling your team you want to get this down to a manageable score. I'd say anything under 15 going into halftime, and this is a game that Phoenix will be in position to win, even though it looks bleak right now. Baseline drive, a great block, great defense. It'll be... Oh, it's going to be a timeout. No, a great clock. job by Eastern. They called. No, shot clock. Oh, violation. shot clock. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah, it was great defense by the Bears there up against the clock. Ball never hit the rim, so that shot clock keeps going even on the shot attempt. Ended up running out, so shot clock violation. So three minutes and 11 seconds left to go. Quick pass down low and a great rejected shot. Landed Schwartz, 6 4 out of Utah. Coming up with a big time defensive play. We're down to three minutes. Eastern working up top. Bolton, he is four of five now from three point range and a nice rebound by Goulet. And a better job chasing him off that line and forcing him to a shot off of the move that his feet weren't quite set, forced him into a miss. Well, forcing it in was Goolsby. That's a turnover. 20 point lead for Eastern as they bring it up out of backcourt. 2.34 on the clock. Eastern has come in here after a three-hour drive from Thatcher, Arizona, and they have shocked the Bears' den, leading it by 20 with 2.22 to go in the half. Drive, a block shot by Quentin Johnson, who's given a spark off the bench. Now the break, all the way down, score it. LeVette Parker, who was the leading scorer in Phoenix's last game, a victory over Central. Well, a stop and a three right here gets PC to that 15-point number that we just talked about. And, of course, <laughs> there's Love that just put a stop to that. Boy, has he had a half. 16 points unofficially, and it's back to a 20-point lead, 50 to 30. Phoenix, Goulet up top. Goolsby, yes, nice job left side. Boy, tough shot and a good finish by him. So Goolsby, who got the start in this game. Quick pass along the baseline, nowhere to go, nowhere to hide, trying to make something happen. Goolsby stayed with him, did not commit the foul, and now a chance to get it down to 16. Goolsby almost traveled with that, spins, great mm. shot. Oh, couldn't get it to go with the left. And actually a really good piece of officiating right there. That really was a vertical defender, even though his body bowed out, and the instinct may be that that had to be a foul. That was actually very, very good, solid vertical defense there. Good no call by Mark Beasley on that baseline. Jumper, got it again. Nate Bradford, if it isn't Bradford, it's Love. And back up to a 20-point lead, 40 seconds. Left to go here in the first half. Johnson. Might have rushed that shot a bit, top of the key. Yeah, definitely not the look Coach Gordon's looking for there. Whenever you see that pinch post action, that's running splits with your shooters on the perimeter. That's something that either goes directly to the rim or is pitched out for a three. So I can tell for sure that he did not like that look and that decision by Clinton Johnson. Nate Bradford with the basketball. He's a product of Portland, Oregon. Five on the shot clock. He's driving. He will dish it off. Here's the baseline drive and the shot, no good. 
Five seconds left to go. Open man. He'll take it to the hoop. He will score it, and that's the end of the first half. Nice job by Parker on the assist from James Papillo. They cut it to 18 as we take it to halftime. A very impressive first half by Eastern Arizona. Back at the Bears Den, downtown Phoenix, along with Will Warasilla, the former head coach of the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes. I'm Jeff Lowry. And a 52 to 37, 34 game here as visiting Eastern gets the ball back here to start the second half. First five minutes critical for PC. I still say they're going to come back and win this game by double digits. But the first five minutes are going to be very telling right here. They can't continue to shoot the ball as poorly as they did in that first half. And a big first half as we got a foul underneath as Reese Plummer, who's the top three-point shooter on the team, shooting over 53% from beyond the arc. We'll go to the line and shoot two. You know, you look at the big three. Uh, DeAndre Love was tremendous with 16. Bolton with 12. Four or six from three-point range. And they really spread that defense out. A lot of turnovers for Phoenix in the first half and a lot of missed outside shots. Yep. And I would look for PC to drop back in that little pressure. Uh, they really need to take away scoring gaps. So once the pressure is broken right here, I anticipate they're going to really start dropping into gaps and make plays like that one right there. Here's Parker getting the steal and bringing it up out of backcourt. He's got it top of the key. Looking to cut into this 17-point lead for Eastern. And the drive and the reverse layup no good. And what a first half. And... Nate Bradford had, not necessarily from a scoring standpoint, but a lot of hustle plays, a lot of rebounds. 17 point lead. Right now, Phoenix is on an 11 to four run going back to the first half. Yeah, and again, like I said, the next couple minutes gonna be critical right here for them. But they also get Nelms back because he got in early foul trouble in that half. So a steadying influence he typically is for this PC team. So the two-point goal by Tyson makes it 54-35. 11-20 left to go. Three ball. And Plummer normally, or rather Goulet, a pretty good shooter from beyond the arc, missed it. Another three ball, and that one rims in and out. And that was LeVette Parker out of Matter Day, California. Tremendous high school, tremendous athletics out there in California. Of course, his hometown is Phoenix. A 19-point lead, 18 minutes. Left to go here in regulation. Bradford shaking and baking and taking it strong, and they're looking good to start the second half. Yeah, PC you thought might come out and jump on it a little bit, and then they gave up a couple of uh, questionable defensive possessions and then quick threes. They just cannot get anything to go down. But I still think at some point in this second half, they're going to catch fire and be able to cut this lead down a little bit. Bradford finds an open man. Joran Tyson, tremendous vision along the baseline, and the lead is back up to 23. So the first two and a half plus minutes here for Phoenix College has been very unsuccessful. They have trailed by as many as 26. And again, they start the second half settling for jump shots outside and contested jump shots like that one. And that one rims out. Right, for, right now, the athleticism and length of this Eastern Arizona team has just given PC fits. In that first matchup, when Phoenix College, led by as many as 43, stolen away by Nelms, he'll take on two defenders all the way and draw the foul. As you said, DeAndre Love was not in that game, so yeah. you know you take away a potential 20 to 30 points there. 
Well, and I'll tell you what, just his influence tonight in the way that he has scored and what that's done to the PC defense. Right now, I would be curious to see if PC changes their defensive philosophy and really instead of trying to extend that pressure up to the half court in traps, whether they pack it more down to take away the gaps and just run at Bolton and everybody else, they just kind of gap around that three-point line. That might be the way defensively for them to go and get back in this. 58-37, Nelms hits both. Easy, uncontested layup. And again, their, their defense is just spread too high right now to where the athleticism is just easily beating any of these trapping scenarios that PC is trying to get them into. 8-3 run to start the second half. Nelms for three, and they just the, the basket's not open tonight for Phoenix College. No, maybe we jinxed them in that pregame by saying they lead the nation in three-point field goal percentage. Well, Matt Gordon made sure that I knew that as this shot will be corralled off the rebound by Quentin Johnson. They may need to get Quentin Johnson into the offensive flow of this game. Yeah. But what a job by Eastern and Coach Litsky tonight. Great game plan, and boy, they're executing it to perfection right now. Well, the nice dribble drive there by Avante Nelms. He had Johnson open, but that was a hard pass. Yeah. That was a hard pass to Corral. And Phoenix College will take a timeout with 15.49 left to play here in regulation. And they are down by 23 on MC TV Sports. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. This cat makes me make art. He's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. All right, we're back at the Bears Den Phoenix College as the visiting Gila Monsters in the all-purple uniforms lead it 60 to 37. 15:40 left to go here in regulation time, and they got the ball again. And everything is going right, and another Tyson score. He has scored six here in the second half. 62-37, 25-point lead. They led by 26 in the first half, and boy, did they need that shot. There's Quentin Johnson. Yeah, see, now Coach Gordon is telling his guys to get back and take off that pressure. I think that's the correct move at this point. Just play good, solid gap defense right now. Well, Phoenix College coming in, looking for the victory. Would have been their 20th of the season. Still got 15 minutes left to go in this one. And it seems like the Gila Monsters counter every time. Quickly down court and the driving layup, and there's a foul. And you know, we don't have the benefit of real-time statistics right now, but I am going to go out on a limb and say that Eastern Arizona is probably shooting over 60% from the field right now. Everything has just been easy for them, no matter where it's been from. Moore gets the roll, and that cuts it to a 24-point deficit. Eastern is led by as many as 26. That was back on a 15-0 run in which they led 48-22. Well, watching this team play right now, it begs the question, what if Coach Litsky had his full arsenal of players this year, what this team could and would have looked like? Would have been very interesting to see. Bradford got trapped down low and then somehow found Schwartz. And we really haven't heard too much from Love here in the second half as Phoenix gets a much needed three. And we're going to get a timeout, Phoenix College. As they trail 66 44 with 14 23 left to go. And you know, it's like chopping down a tree. You just get one, one swipe at the tree with an ax at a time. Yeah. 
Well, still a lot of time left to go in this game. 66-44 is our score with 14 minutes and 23 seconds left to go here in the second half. Will Warsilla joining us here on MCTV. And, you know, I've called a, several of your games down through the years when you were the head coach at Scottsdale. And uh, I got to say, from a personal standpoint, it's, it's truly a pleasure having you here in the booth. Oh, well, thank you. It's awesome to be here. I was excited to get that. I was excited to get that call because working with you and when Mike Caratanudo does games, it's always fun sitting on this side, mm -hmm. you know, because my coaching style was very much on the analytical side and game management side. That was really my strength as a coach. Obviously, recruiting wasn't, um, you know, but being able to sit on this side and really evaluate and analyze how games are going, I enjoy this part. So thank you very much for having me. So a 22-point lead. Phoenix needs some stops. They have not had a strong showing on defense to start the second half, something that they needed as they trailed by 18 going into the locker room at halftime. And right now, the Gila Monsters are winning on every aspect of the game. They get the offensive board in the land of the Giants and then the fifth three-pointer for Davon Bolton. And that was one of those defensive possessions. That maybe was the best one that PC played all night, but just didn't finish it with the defensive rebound. You get a kick out for three, that goes down. And Davis Wade has made this game. I mean, it's not respectable right now, but where in the world would Phoenix be without him? Another three ball. It's raining threes here. <laughs> and that one by Landon Schwartz. Well, and that's what we expected initially. Or we just love, didn't expect me. for PC to be missing all of their threes. That was DeAndre Love, excuse me, coach. Yep. 19 points. Here's the lob underneath the Johnson, and Johnson powers his way up and scores. It may be up to Johnson and Wade to pick up some of the scoring here for Matt Gordon's eighth-ranked Phoenix College Bears. Yeah, I agree, because right now the big three for PC just have not been able to get on track at all. Good rebound. And that's Davis Wade. He's listed at 185, but he is he's a, a very strong, thick player. No question about it. He launches a three, can't get it. Look at that rebound, the one-handed grab by Nate Bradford, quickly up out of backcourt, pushing the issue. Here's the Guard going up strong, and Devin Bolton, and he scores again. 74-49. A shocker at the Bears' Den Phoenix College in downtown Phoenix. And we're going to get an offensive foul. Maybe a little Hollywood on that one, possibly. Yeah. Kind of from this angle, it looks like he might get an Academy Award. Normally, Mark Beasley doesn't get fooled by those, so he must have seen something that maybe our angle didn't show. Yeah. But right now, I, I would love to see a specific sabermetric stat, and that is how many possessions that Eastern has had and how many they have scored on. Because right now, even when they miss their initial shot and they get the second chance put back. Right now, their scoring efficiency in this game is just off the charts. Eastern leading at 74-49. They are in fifth place in Division I. Phoenix, a Division II team in first place, 12-3. and three. Shot taken, no good. Rebound, Papillo. And the Chicago native brings it up out of backcourt. Here's Goolsby going up with the left hand. He had three defenders around him, and Eastern continues to push the ball. They're going to drive. They're going to score. Yep. Bolton the Clark. 76-49, a 27-point lead. This is the largest lead of the game. Three ball, and they need it, and they just cannot buy no. an outside shot. They have absolutely no rhythm and never have gotten into one yet in this game. Eastern wants a timeout, so do we. 27 point lead for the Gila Monsters on MCTV Sports. 
Arizona. Ramp up your career in technology industries with a degree or certificate through Maricopa Community Colleges. Industrial maintenance, automation, machining, and welding careers are in high demand and pay well. Go to rampupaz.com to find out how to get the career and paycheck you've always wanted. Start making up to $40,000 or more in as little as nine months. Be in demand. Enroll now. Classes start soon at Maricopa Community Colleges. Visit rampupaz.com to learn more. Well, the Gila Monsters of Eastern Arizona owning their largest lead of the night, 27 points over Phoenix College, a team that's coming in here just 4-11 and 11 in conference play. And Matt Gordon told us today that his team over the last three and a half seasons have won more conference games than anybody in this conference. Yeah, it, it's amazing that on their home floor to come out like this and just not have the type of typical Phoenix College game that they're used to. Very shocking. Needing a three ball, couldn't get it. Here's Goolsby. Losing it down low, and that'll be a turnover. Yeah, he's really scuffling right now. You can see it in his body language and just the way he's going right now. That might be wise for Coach Gordon to maybe look at getting somebody else in for him because he's really scuffling. And Eastern playing still with a lot of energy as we approach the halfway mark here in the second period. Well, when you have a season like they've had, to say that, you know what, we went into the number eight team in the country and just gave it to them, you know what, that, that's a snowball effect. And it shows just in the way they've played. Their confidence level from the basic two, three minute mark of this game has just been through the roof. They got off to a great start and they haven't relinquished it. Goolsby be going strong and tried to dunk it. Should have laid it off the glass. I know Matt Gordon was hoping for a layup, not a dunk. And now Eastern throws it away. Have they made an indication whose ball it is? Yeah, it's, it's going to stay Eastern ball. Yeah. This is a good substitution by Coach Gordon right there. We thought maybe the possession before, but you could see his displeasure. Goolsby made a great move, gave it to the rim. All he had to do was lay it up. Instead, tried to dunk it, miss it. And these are the type of things, the four-point possessions, if Eastern converts on this, that coaches hate. And there it is, because you give up an easy two that you worked for on your end, and you don't get it, and then go down the other end and give it up. 29-point so, lead, Coach. Unbelievable. Nine and a half to go. Another missed shot underneath. Land of the Giants, second effort shot good. And Reese Plummer gets the basket. 53% shooter from the three-point range. 5'6'5", 200-pounder out of Deer Valley High School in Glendale, Arizona, shooting one. Yeah, I really like his game. Very underrated and an unheralded player for PC, but if you ask the coaching staff, they understand how valuable this kid is to their team. He does everything to allow the wings to have the success that they have. So he misses the free throw. That cuts it to a 78-51 lead. But right now, Phoenix College, need, they need one of those runs. The only thing that they could be proud about here in the second half, they've done a pretty good job of containing DeAndre Love. But DeAndre Love really hasn't even touched the ball here in the second half. Yeah, he. Um, it, it's almost like he has become very disinterested, looking up the scoreboard, realizing they're up 27 and saying, all right, I did my job. Now everybody else can eat. You know, mm -hmm. they, they kind of has that mentality right now, which I'm disappointed because if you want to be a player at the next level, you've got to have that foot on the gas for all 40. And you never know who's sitting up in the stands possibly looking to recruit you. So a little disappointed that he hasn't been more assertive in this half, despite what the scoreboard says. 8.40 left to go, and that'll drive a coach crazy. You're up 25 and uh, just an ill-advised pass. Yeah, back-to-back -back turnovers for Eastern. You can kind of look at their body language right now, but they look very disinterested. It's almost like they've said, all right, we've proved our point. Now we want to get on the bus and just get this game over with. They've got a long bus trip ahead of them. There's a three ball, and Phoenix just cannot knock one of those down here. No. Like I said, I wish we had stats because if I'm guessing right now, just trying to go back through this game, they've got to be 3 of 25, somewhere in that range from three-point. When you shoot 41 as a team, that's awful tough to try to adjust your game to fix that. Well, Matt's team 
Not a very good rebounding team this year. He says, I don't put a lot of emphasis on rebounding, which I, I was a little surprised to hear from a coach. But when you lead the nation, 41% field goal percentage, and they have knocked down two here in the second half. Probably about two for 10, two for 11. We don't have the stats, but yeah. somewhere in that vicinity. And I think we're pretty close to that. And, you know, when you look at it, 7.53 to go. The last three Eastern possessions have been turnover, 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 and Phoenix hasn't cut into the lead at all. So um, I stand firmly corrected that I thought Phoenix would at some point get this on track. Clearly it's not going to happen tonight. Checking in is Calvin Blades, a 6'6". Boy, you talk about the length of this team. I know you've mentioned it a couple of times. But traditionally, Matt does, has really never had tall, tall teams. I mean, you know, he's yeah. kind of playing into the, the new style, the new. Yeah. Five, uh, five or six years ago, he had a 6'10 player. Mm -hmm. um, names escaping me. I want to say Juan Almeida was his name. Um, that back then when this conference on the Division I level was, you know, you had to have that guy to match up with the Easterns and Westerns and Cochise. Um, but, yeah, as this conference even has evolved, look, at the end of the day, Arizona does not have a really good pool of talented big men, and if they are, they're not going to junior college. So it makes it tough. You've got to pick the best players available and build a program around them. And that's LeVette Parker's first basket. Unbelievable how quiet he has been tonight. And they needed, they needed some points out of him. Came in averaging 13.7. Matthews has been held at bay, six, six or seven points here tonight. Matthews averaging 14.4. Big score, the leading scorer has been Reese Plummer. Yeah, I don't think we've called Matthews. I don't even recall calling his name tonight. But yeah, Plummer and... Uh, Davis Wade have been the, the two kids for PC. Oh, my There's goodness. Love. And they're loving it on the Gila Monster bench. That what brought them up. What a play. And what athleticism by love. Similar to a guy we had, and there's a three ball. That'll cut it to a 21. Phoenix is not going to give up. I mean, you still got six and a half minutes. They just, I think they just need a couple of stops. And that is like the sixth turnover on the last eight times down. Big three ball here. Can't knock it down. No. Had a chance maybe to try to get a fire lit. But, yeah, and this is a great timeout by Coach Litsky right here because he senses the same thing we do, that look. Fellas, that Scorps clock still has 618 on it. Let's get refocused. Let's make sure we are taking care of business and finish this out. Well, we were talking about DeAndre Love, 16 points in that first half. That's unofficial because we're, our statistics uh, went down at halftime. And uh, similar to a guy, maybe not quite as athletic as Michael Craig, one of the great mm. players this conference has ever seen and, and probably the most entertaining player I've ever seen in this conference in the 10 or 11 years I've been covering it. But, um, you know, he certainly has a lot of the moves that we saw from Michael, you know, four years ago at South Mount. Oh, absolutely. That's a great analogy. And anybody out there that wants to see one of the nastiest dunks ever can go to YouTube and type in Michael Craig off the backboard. And literally it was in a game, and I think it might have actually been against Eastern Arizona. It was. And he literally threw it off the backboard to himself and dunked over two guys in something that I have never seen in a live game. Um, but just a physical specimen. 6'5", six, 6'6", yes. six, six, a rocked up, shredded 230 mm -hmm. plus pounds. And he could, could jump out of the gym and he could knock down shots. What a player he was. And the funny thing about that, that was a game we had on MCTV Sports. And it was over the two 6'10 players that Eastern had. Yeah, it was an absolutely or, ridiculous dunk. Was it Eastern or was it Western? I can't I, I want to say it was Eastern. Fast break and the score, and they've cut it to under 20. 80 to 61. Yeah. Well, you know, we'd like to see uh, our local team here do well and maybe make a game of this. Well, they needed to do this 
by that 15 minute mark. Like we said, that first five minutes of the second half is when they needed to come out and kind of have this spark. But, you know, uh, they're going to play hard to the end because that's a trait of a Coach Gordon team, but that hole might be too big right now. Yeah, well, that didn't that didn't help the cause at all. I've uh, been impressed. Nate Bradford's been the player of the game in the second half, no doubt. Yeah, they've been very distributed. We knew they had the big three, and they were all very good basketball players. Good I didn't realize how good Love was. Reese Plummer doing everything he can under there. The drive. Love is kind of kicking himself for not finishing on that play. 21-point lead here for Eastern Arizona. You're watching MCTV Sports and our coverage of National Junior College men's basketball, Will Warsilla. Former head coach at Scottsdale, I'm Jeff Lowry and our entire crew. National champions was Phoenix in 2014. And I would have to say, and I've been I've been with MCTV since 2006. It, it probably was the most exciting, had to be one of the most exciting moments for this conference across the board, whether it's football or what have you, to have a national championship. I know Joe Kirsting won three at Glendale, but mm -hmm. Phoenix College never had never won one. In fact, no, I don't think we've had a champion out of the ACCAC in Division Two, And maybe, I don't know if we've had one in Division One. Yeah, we've had them in Division One. Um, you know, the, the one thing about that team that, that I recall was their ability to beat you a number of different ways, where even though I know Coach Gordon obviously is not going to be happy with this team's performance today, and he still believes this could be the best team he's ever had, that national championship team could beat you on the perimeter. They could beat you mid-range. They could beat you on the block. The one thing that I've noticed tonight, and it's, it's come very true, that if you're not able to hit three-point shots, you have to have another bullet in the gun, some other way that you can go to the block, you can work mid-range, you can work off of curl screens and get stuff in the paint. You can generate things defensively. They haven't done any of those tonight, and it's been, unfortunately for them, just a bad shooting night. It certainly has. Riley Goulet scores. Well, he also had one of the great players in league history, conference history, and Brandon Brown. No doubt about it. So, Fantastic all-around yeah. basketball player. But he was that guy, like we saw in the girls' game earlier, yeah. that from the guard spot does everything. He could score it. On nights when they were really keying on him, it created gaps for every other player, and he found every other player and knew how to get guys involved. If somebody was struggling, he was good enough to say, okay, I'm going to take it into the gap, draw that defender, give him an easy look to get him going. He was that type of player. Levante Nelms at the line. 4.51 on the clock. He will hit one of the two to cut it to a 21-point deficit. And Bradford back to work. Back out to Bradford, and they almost got that one down. Rims out. LeVette Parker. Going to start launching some threes now, Coach? Well, it, it, at this point, you know, you've got 430 to go. Nothing's been going right for you tonight, but you got to stick with who you are. If you're a three-point shooting team, you shoot threes. And it's going to be feast or famine. And right now, you don't change that if you don't have any other options. You just keep firing and hope you can catch some lightning in a bottle. You're going to get a foul underneath Plummer, who had good positioning that time. And over the back was Calvin Blades, one of the reserve players for Coach Litsky and the uh, Gila Monsters. I'm just shocked. I'm, I'm going to say it now. I'm just shocked this team is 4-11 and 11 in conference play. You and me both because I, I, I'm looking at the talent here, and if I had to try to game plan for this team and this was the film I had to do it on, I wouldn't be getting a whole lot of sleep. That's for sure. Well, they get the offensive board and a foul. That is only the, well, that's uh, 
going to be the 19 foul, so we're in the bonus here for Phoenix, and this is a good way to catch up. Well, and that clock stops, you know, because yeah. right now time is the enemy for PC. You know, you've got four minutes to go. You know, you're at risk of having, you know, what could be a demoralizing loss at home to a team that on paper you should have beaten easily, but this also could be a positive for Coach Gordon and his team to kind of get them recalibrated, refocused for the playoff run to say, hey, you can't take nights off. They're going to hear a lot of that speech down throughout the week. I, I would venture to say so, but, you know, look, it's not necessarily, look, PC has played hard tonight. They, it's not like they're just rolling over. They're playing hard, but in games like this, when you're not knocking down shots, it's what else can you do? You know, is it saying, okay, look, we're not scoring at all. We're not shooting it well. So that means everybody's got to crash the glass and let's get it on the offensive board side. You know, things like that. There's a takeaway and a shot and a score. And that is Tavion Moore out of Independence High School and another turnover and they're getting sloppy. He'll take it in for the one-handed jam, and all of a sudden it's a 14-point game with 3.13 left to go. Well, maybe now we're understanding why they're 4 and 11. Well, the good, you know, for PC, they still have one more foul to give, too, before they start parading to the line they being Eastern Arizona. So be curious to see what Coach Gordon has in mind here defensively. Wow. Eastern still playing for their playoff lives. Arizona Western is the top team in Division I at 12 and three, 19 and four overall. Coach East, who's always up there. Coach Carrillo. One of the top programs out here. They are a game behind Arizona at 11 and four. Then you drop down, you've got Central. Because Central has good. not been as good as they've been in years past. Nope. So, well, yeah, yep. I'm, I'm sorry, we got Mesa. So you yep. got Arizona Western, Cochise, Mesa at nine and six, who Eastern's not going to catch. Yep. So it comes down to this is a, these are big games for them. I mean, they are still in the hunt. Five and ten, Central Arizona College. Yeah, tough possession here for Phoenix. You got a generous five-second call. You had a chance to maybe make this a little more interesting with a possession and the score there. But with a bucket here, it's going to be very tough for PC. And I would be shocked, there we go, if the ball is not in Love's hands and he gets to be the one creating this. Now they get it over to Bolton and another turnover. Here's the fast break. Here's Moore going up against Love. He missed the shot and out of bounds. It should be, I think that's Phoenix ball. No. 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 Wishful thinking. Michael Ojedo on the side had that clearly, and Corbett Hess, the baseline official, asked for help appropriately, and Ojeda, I think, saw it the whole way and correctly called it Eastern's ball. Another turnover, wow. double figures here in the second half for the Eastern Arizona team. Three ball, they needed that one. They're gonna get the rebound, Ooh. the rejection on the shot. And that was Calvin Blades, a 6'6 competitor, going up strong with 2.03 left to go. Eastern beat Central in their matchup. We're going to have a stoppage in play here due to a bloody nose by one of the Eastern players. They've got to not only get him cleaned up, but now they've got to come out on the floor and get the blood cleaned up underneath the basket. So we're going to stay here because we don't know how long this is going to take. It's not an official timeout per se. They'll put the ball back in play as soon as they get the blood cleaned up. So, Coach, going back to the Division I standings, right now Eastern a full game behind Central, but they beat Central 92-81 to in their first meeting. 
they will meet again on February 25th. So that fourth number, that fourth spot, definitely still up for grabs in the ACC AC Division One play. And, and that's amazing because you know, and I know we've said it already. Mm -hmm. With the performance that Eastern had here tonight, it just begs the question what this team would have looked like had they had their full complement all year long. Because give Coach Litsky a lot of credit. You know, a, a team that has four wins in the conference typically doesn't have a, a path. And, you know, obviously coming into the eighth ranked team in the country, if they'd have lost this one, it would have made that very, very difficult. So, but give him and his team a lot of credit. Boy, they have played an outstanding basketball game, although it's been sloppy in the last three minutes for them with all the turnovers. Boy, he had a good look. Plummer with a rebound, can't get it to go, and then the second effort by Moore. And it's down to 12, but there's only a buck 45 left to go in regulation time. And Eastern has been very sloppy. They've been turning the ball over. But Bradford goes in for the big two-handed jam. And that one may seal the deal. That play is exactly how the night has gone for PC. You get a tap from behind. You get a loose ball that is in the hands of the PC player. It fumbles out, and Eastern gets a dunk. Nelms for three. Back iron no good. Gets the rebound. Swing it over to Parker, and he hits. So now it is 90 to 79. Look at Coach Gordon. He's about two yards out onto the court. He might be one of the few coaches that can get away with that. <laughs> Jerry Carrillo at Cochise is probably the most notorious for it, though. Well, the last time we were here, and it was actually Cochise playing Phoenix College. And I don't know what happened, but Jerry got on the wrong side of the officials, and they, you know, there's the dotted line that you have to supposedly stay behind. And he got te teed up a few times that night. Yeah. Well, I am no stranger to technicals, as a matter of <laughs> no, fact. No, you're not. I, I tried to get Mark Beasley to throw me out of a game one time that uh, <laughs> tough season I had at Scottsdale, I tried to get him to run me. We were getting hammered in a game, and I was tired and just upset. And I went up to him, and I said, Mark, I'm going to start cussing at you like a lunatic if you don't throw me out. And he had the best line coming back. He said, hey, if I have to sit here and watch your team play, so do you. Sit <laughs> down. I don't care what you tell me. I ain't running you. And, you know, it just tells you, he, I mean, we have a great relationship now, but it was just one of the funniest things looking back on it and just how good of an official he is. Well, KV Moore just made a beautiful play. I mean, he went up high, tipped that thing in. It's down to an 11-point lead. Yeah. I like the fact that, I mean, they are not, they haven't quit. A lot of teams might cash it in after the slam dunk by Nate Bradford, who's had a big second half. Definitely consideration for player of the game. Yeah, I, this one would be tough to pick one because without love in that first half, th this is a completely different game because Absolutely. they had no answer for love tonight in that first half, and he really set the table for everybody else. Down to 32 seconds in this one. Well, I may have got the point differential right, just the wrong team on the top side. I, I still am like you. I am stunned at the lack of shooting tonight for the Bears. Um, it, it's gonna be interesting because as a coach, when you're having a season like Coach Gordon has had, when you get close to that playoff time, you kinda wanna get it out of your system and maybe this is the blessing in disguise game. When they look back on it, that'll say, yeah, this is the one that woke us up that had to get us recalibrated and refocused. Open three, Davis Wade. I just don't think they used him. He wasn't getting enough touches in the second half. So a delay a game warning yeah. against Phoenix College. But yeah, I think uh, Davis Wade, I, I don't think he touched the ball enough here in the second half. And he, yeah. he played a very solid first half. Yeah, he's done a very, very nice job. That delay of game for people at home that may have not understand why that call was made. If you are guarding 
the player throwing the ball in from out of bounds. You cannot have any part of your body cross that end line. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was Riley Goulet that was guarding the inbounder was clearly with his foot on the baseline. So the appropriate call by the officials to catch that. That's an old Larry Bird trick. Absolutely. And it's one from a coaching standpoint that I always told our players that we prep for, that we save our delay of games so that in the end of a game situation like that, when most officials are looking at contact plays out here and don't see that, that we can use that to our advantage. This crew, you're not going to get that trick by. So another great job of officiating tonight. I can't believe how many times I pointed that out. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you what, if these guys heard that, they'd wonder what happened. <laughs> So we got 21 seconds left to go. We invite you to stay with us at the conclusion of this game for our MCTV Sports post game wrap up show. We'll try to corral a couple of players from tonight's winning team. Maybe you can talk to DeAndre Love after the game. Well, I'll tell you what, if I was coaching a four year school, I might be talking to him about other things because that young man, despite his lack of I, I would say intent in the second half. He, he does look very disinterested, which disappoints me as a, a former coach that if that's a kid that I want to recruit, I want to make sure he's got a motor, that he's going to play for 40 regardless of what the scoreboard says. Up 40, down 40, doesn't matter. You play the full 40. Right. A um, little disappointed about that with him, but, boy, I'll tell you what, the way he set the table for this team tonight clearly – uh, we're not having this type of game without the first half that he had. Well, you can't say that about Nate Bradford. Uh, he's played uh, he's played 40 minutes here tonight. Yep. The outstanding guard, 6'3", 165, top scorer here in the second half. Yep. Let's see if Phoenix can at least cut this under, uh, get it down to single digits. Remember, they trailed by as many as 27 at one point. And the basket is good. That's a... Three-point play, and they're still playing. Quick foul with 12 seconds left to go, and now the lead is, well, <laughs> I look up to the scoreboard, and it's down to seven. Yeah, it would have been nice to have seen this at about the 10-minute mark, I really was thinking we were going to have a, a competitive, fun, up-and-down game where everybody's knocking down threes, and... It was just going back and forth, and it was going to be a who blinks first type of game. That that was really what I had anticipated coming into this, but unfortunately it, uh, for the Bears, it went one way, and fortunately for Eastern and Coach Litsky, it went their way. DeAndre Love. Leading scorer on the court. We're down to seven seconds. Phoenix turns it over, and you hope fouls and help. Let's see, they'll go ahead and score it, and that's it. 98 to 87 is our final score. Our wrap-up show is coming up next on MCTV Sports. Six years old and I want to be a fireman. Hi, Coach Will Warasilla back here at the Bears Den where Eastern Arizona prevails today over the number eight team in the nation, Phoenix College. I'm standing here with DeAndre Love, the star of the game, the player of the game, 31 points. But DeAndre, really it was you setting the table in that first half for your teammates. Talk us through that. As a former coach, I know how my teams came into this. You guys are still alive in the playoffs. What was the mindset coming in here to play the number eight ranked Phoenix College Bears tonight? Well, the number one thing in our mind was to come in and play defense and compete and work really hard and try to keep up the intensity. 
Okay. One of the things that I noticed right off the bat on the on the telecast was how easy you scored. And the one thing as a former coach that I always look at with players is where do they get their points? Are they a stand-up, spot-up shooter, or can they score in multiple ways? And that was the one thing that jumped off the page with me, with you, was your ease in how you got your points. Talk a little bit through that. Well, I just tried to not force it and just go out there and take really good shot selections. I tried to get my team involved and try to be pretty unpredictable out there. Well, I certainly think you did that. Uh, just from the looks of it, just your ability to get points whenever you wanted to, I think really set the table for you guys. So you've got games coming up. Get back to the locker room. Enjoy this one. Congratulations on a great game, young man. You Thanks did a great a job. So this is Will Warasilla wrapping it from the Bears Den again. Eastern Arizona prevails 98-87. to Back in a minute. We were one of the first colleges in the Southwest to offer evening and weekend classes in small business management because we understand it can be hard pursuing that dream business idea during regular business hours. Let us help you get started with yours because at Glendale Community College, we believe it's never too late. So as you can see, our sales are improving, but we can do better or too early to pursue your dreams. All right, back here at Phoenix College, a disappointing night for Matt Gordon's team, the eighth ranked team in the country, losing to a four and 11 team. But boy, I'll tell you, you talk about the defense that this uh, Gila Monster team came out with. They, they played 40 minutes of, I thought, outstanding defense. They turned the ball over quite a bit in that second half, but they were able to prevail 98-87 and a great night for Love and Bradford and Bolton, and it was a great night for the Monsters. Yeah, the, the one thing that surprises me is that when you have a game like this where a team throughout the season had had some defensive lapses, that to come out like that with the aggressiveness, and I really thought, look, Phoenix College, we all know, shoots the ball really well from three. They lead the nation at 41%. But the one thing that always affects three-point shooters is athleticism and quickness to close out and close down space because three-point shooters, they need space and they need separation. And the one thing that I thought Eastern was magnificent at tonight, they took away a lot of space. And consequently, you got shots that maybe were just a touch out of rhythm that didn't go. And quite honestly, PC shot themselves into a hole that they couldn't get out of. Well, they trailed by 27 at one point in that second half. And that uh, obviously there was some athleticism, maybe more than athleticism, just the length that this team brought in here. And they're going to have a pretty good bus trip back to Thatcher, Arizona, down there in eastern Arizona. So again, 98-87, our final score, Eastern Arizona with the victory, now puts themselves in a good position to make a run for that number four spot in the Division I playoffs. Well, yeah, and sitting here watching Coach Litsky get interviewed on Eastern Arizona radio, you know, really give him a lot of credit because when you have a team that goes through what they've had to go through this year, you as a coach, it's tough to get the guys ready to play every game and I thought that he did a fantastic job tonight. And I don't know what was said in their locker room before, but I would hope something along the lines of throw the records out the window. We are an athletic team. This is what we need to do to put ourselves in a position to win. And boy, did they get it done tonight. That was an impressive victory from Eastern Arizona tonight. Absolutely. They definitely were the better team here tonight. Love paces everyone with 31 points. Uh, it was a total team effort, but those uh, 16 first half points really set the tone. Uh, Davis for Phoenix College had 14 the pace, the Phoenix College Bears. So obviously uh, now we'll be looking at the polls at the end of the week and see how this affects Phoenix College. But this might be a, a, a slight wake up call. I think you kind of alluded to that during the broadcast. And we certainly wish both these teams the best as we wind down the 2016-2017 season. So for Will Warasilla and our entire crew, this is Jeff Lowry saying good night from downtown Phoenix. And again, Phoenix College loses to Eastern Arizona.